A very good day to everyone and warm welcome to our webinar on occupational medicine workflows and solutions. We here at Bismatics hope that all of you are staying in the best of health and keeping safe. I am Dia Ranjan, Marketing Manager at Bismatics and the organizer for today's webinar. And joining me today as our panelist is Monica Walker. Uh, let me introduce you all to Monica. Monica serves as the Business Development Manager at Bismatics and she has over 20 years of experience in practice management, billing, primary care, and pain management. In her previous role, Monica oversaw the implementation of Prognosis EHR in a 22 location multi-specialty system. So welcome Monica, and thank you for sharing your expertise with all of us today. Uh, before we begin, uh, a few housekeep housekeeping items for all of you. Uh, we would like to emphasize that this webinar does not provide any legal advice to any attendees. Uh, we also have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So please type in your questions in the chat box on the lower right hand corner and send it over to us and we will answer them in the order we receive. We will provide a recording of the webinar along with the slides in a follow up email so you can have access to the recordings and slides later on and we will have them available in our resource center also. So let us begin the session. Uh, Monica, welcome, and over to you now. Thank you, Dia, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We are going to be covering quite a few items for occupational and employer health, in addition to the uh, normal pieces of the EHR that are also available with the occupational health modules, things such as physical exam and HPI, ROS, so on and so forth. These are some special items that are tailored specifically towards occupational health and employer health, as well as uh, some existing pieces that there's some special utilizations for. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the employer protocol section, the medical review process, the employer portal, the ways that we communicate with patients via ProCheckIn, My Health Records app, and the patient portal. We're also going to take a look at patient forms, doctor forms, the DOT certification documentation process, drug screen randomization, different interfaces that we have with our system, and telemedicine. Our occupational employer health software is designed to be used by any practice providing those types of services, occupational health clinics, on-site employer health clinics, near-site employer health clinics, urgent and primary care clinics who provide occupational health services, and then companies who manage and build employer health clinics. Our employer protocols enable practices to set up specific treatment protocols by the employer, by the position. Uh, you can have different types of encounters and each of those encounters can have different information. So to access the employer setup, you go to your settings and configuration screen and under the vendors column, you pick the word employer. That then opens up a searchable list of employers that are in the system. There's an add new button. And once you click that, then you're able to start entering information in this screen. So I'm going to take this screen and break it up section by section and just go over what each of the items within this screen do. And then at the end, I'm going to show a little demonstration of kind of how that works within the uh, patient encounter. So this first top left section is our employer detail section where you're able to enter address, telephone number, fax number, tax ID, contact name, so on and so forth. The next section is the department, so you can list within each employer which departments are available, they can have different addresses, you can also decide who's going to have the uh, invoice emailed, and you can also see on the history button who added those departments and when they were last edited. You can see a list of the users assigned to that employer and give them access to the employer, pro, uh, employer portal. You can also decide what types of access they get. So can they see the documents that are being shared by the clinic? Can they see invoices, payments, aging, and can they manage their own users? The next section is the job section. So for any employers who like to have the billing done by job number, you're able to load those job numbers there and assign those to the patients that are being seen at the clinic. The next section is the actual protocol setup, and I'm going to show that in a separate screen so we can see it nice and big. So you can have multiple different protocols for each employer, and typically those are set up in coordination with an encounter type. So you would have an encounter type for your pre-employment physicals, 
accident related injuries, workers comp injuries. You could also have some primary care type protocols. So if you're doing vaccination visits, uh, urgent care type visits, those can also have employer protocols set up as well. You can add any types of tests, their lab, radiology, EKG, for example, physical examination templates. You can specify exactly what you want to have completed uh, during that visit. You can determine what paperwork the pro provider completes, what paperwork the patient completes, and then you can add additional procedures such as spirometry, audiometry, injections, and vaccines. Once you have set up in the employer protocol, for a specific visit type, I'm going to flip into our encounter here and show you kind of what that looks like. So Mr. Michael here has been scheduled for a pre-employment examination. And when we go into his encounter and to our OCMED screen, we can now see that the information that was in our protocol that we were just looking at has been added into his screen here to be completed. So based upon what was set up in our protocol screen, all of this pulled into our encounter and we know exactly what we need to do for him today for his pre-employment physical. The next section in our employer protocol is just a notes, uh, a notes section. You can place this in here and that way the clinic can see anything specific. So for instance, in this situation, if the drug screen has failed and they want you to contact somebody immediately, you can put that in there so the clinic can see that information quickly. We also have a medical review process. So if you wanna have your records at the end of each encounter automatically sent to someone at an employer who needs to review those, whether that's somebody at the employer or a third party who maybe reviews those records for the clinic, a physician or something like that, you can set that up in the medical review section and you can have that um, the progress note for that encounter set up with exactly the information that needs to go to that person. So you can choose whether that's gonna be sent via email or via fax. It does go via an encrypted email. And the first email they will get the attachment, then they'll also get an email separately with the password for that encrypted email. The next section is the insurance details. So you can say for a specific employer what type of insurance you want to have listed. So that can be their employer health insurance. That could also be workers' comp insurance. You can also click directly into the employer billing section and view the employer's account. You can look at specific invoices. You can look at um, any kind of charges, payments, all of those sorts of things without having to flip to the billing side and search for any kind of reports, you can see that right there within the employer screen. Our next section is a new feature to prognosis, and this gives you the ability to split claims to multiple different insurance companies for a protocol or for an employer based on CPT code. So a lot of employers have third-party administrators who handle, for instance, their drug screening or other items. So this gives you the ability to determine which third-party administrator or insurance company you want each of those codes to go to. You can also load contact information in here in case there are questions. So in this example, we're going to send some information to the TPA Align and then some drug screening codes to a TPA called eScreen. We could also send some of it to workers' comp insurance. And if we needed to bill the patient for specific things, we can also split that. And when the claims come into the billing side, this automatically splits multiple claims uh, so that it goes to each of those employers or each of those insurance companies, and it saves a ton of time on the billing side getting all that set up. The next section is the invoicing parameters. So many, many employers want to be billed at different frequencies. Uh, they may want to have some specific information included in their invoices. So this gives you the ability by employer to set that information up. So you're able to decide whether you want to pull the invoice by encounter type, department, or job number. So in the situation where we had the job number in the previous screens, that's where you would indicate that. You can group the invoices by patient, charge code, date of service by patient, or date of service by charge code. So just depending on how they want those listed on the invoice and grouped. You can hide the charge codes if they don't want to see the CPT codes. You can schedule the invoices to be sent daily, weekly, or monthly. You can document their payment terms. So if they have 30 days to pay, 45 days to pay. You can include a purchase order number if their accounting department prefers that. You can also configure different invoice formats for different employers. So if some employers have some specific information they need to see on their invoice, you're able to create a custom 
format specifically for that employer. And then you can also determine which email address the invoice will go to. So that's separate from the medical review process that sends the medical records. This email sends the invoices themselves. Our next section is the employer fee schedule, which gives you the ability to set up a fee schedule for each employer. And then we have a note section where you can put information which can be seen within the patient register and within the protocol in the uh, schedule screen. You can also see when the employer was last modified, who modified it, and you can see the last time that the employer logged into the employer portal. So that takes us to our next topic, which is the employer portal. Our employer portal gives employers the opportunity to retrieve records, see billing and invoices and statements. This is what our login screen looks like. So as we set up our users on the previous screen, we would give them a username and a password, similar to the way that we do the patient portal. They would come here, they would log in. And once they log in, if they have the access rights to see clinic shared documents, so those records from the physical exams, those sorts of things, they would see a list of patients names here. And then I also have an example of the billing screen so they can choose how they want to view their invoices or their payments um, from that billing screen. And then they also can manage users if they have that access. So it's a really nice tool to be able to give the employers that your clinic works with access to records without having to manually send them anything. <clears throat> Our next topic is the patient portal. We have in, within our patient portal the ability to request refills, retrieve records, schedule appointments, send messages, and complete patient forms. So this is actually a screenshot of the patient portal that is in development to be revamped. We are going to be releasing this in the next few months. So I snuck a couple of screenshots in here. So this is going to be the new login page. And then this is going to be the dashboard. So within this screen, you can see the appointments the patients have scheduled any kind of billing statements. You can also see messages that they've sent and received, who their primary care physician is, health reminders, which is a really nice feature for occupational medicine. You can put in the schedule for their annual exams and remind them of things that they need to have, including vaccines. And then they can also, with the quick links, quick click and refill prescriptions. And you can see along the top here, access to go into each of those little items. And then this is just a quick screenshot of the appointment page where they can schedule appointments. In addition to the patient portal, we have the ability to have patients arrive via a tablet-based kiosk. This gives the patients the ability to uh, arrive themselves in the clinic without having to have a formal login uh, for the patient portal. So it gives you a really good way to get 100% um, of your patients to complete their paperwork electronically within your clinic. And when we look at those patient forms in a few minutes, you'll understand why that's such a powerful tool. So you would have an iPad or a tablet within your clinic. They would come in, put in their first name, last name, and their date of birth. And if they have an appointment scheduled that day, it will go ahead and arrive them and then take them to their patient form screen to fill out their information. <clears throat> and our third way to communicate with patients is our My Health Records app. That's available on the Apple Store as well as Google, and that gives patients all of the uh, tools that are available in the patient portal, including prescription refills, seeing their records, scheduling appointments, sending messages, completing forms, but it also allows them to participate in telehealth visits right there within the app. So I just have a quick screenshot of what our patient portal uh, application looks like here, and if they were going to join their video consult visit, they would just click that button right there and it would put them into the appointment. Our next section is patient forms. Patient forms are a really powerful tool that gives employers and providers the ability to have patients do a lot of the data entry for them. So instead of having your staff ask the patients about their symptoms for the day, their past medical history, you really can take that information and have the patient fill that out and then accept it into their encounter. So I'm going to go back to my encounter here and show you a patient form. So on our home screen here, we have our patient form icons. When they're yellow, it means that they're blank. Red means that something has been completed and green means that it has been accepted into my encounter. So when I go into my new patient's face sheet, initially there isn't any information filled out. And obviously I could have my medical assistant go through each of these sections with the patient and fill in their allergies and their current medications and all of that information or I can have the patient complete the patient form in one of those three different ways on the patient portal, 
on the patient app as well as on the tablet-based kiosk. Also, my staff could theoretically come here and complete this as well, or I could have the patients fill out paperwork and have my staff enter the information here. This is just a sample intake form. So when we implement this system, we take the exact information that you look for in your practice, your ROS, the history information that you want to gather, particularly with occupational health, you may have some exposure information that you want to gather. You may also have some injury information that needs to be gathered. So this is just an example and I've completed a little information in this patient form. When I accept this patient form, which is not accepting for me. No, I do apologize. It looks like there's a delay in accepting here. I'm going to flip into another patient and show you how that one worked. So this one is green here and that one has been accepted. So when I go into my patient form within the patient, I did not complete the right information. I do apologize, guys. It looks like my patient form is not accepting. I'm going to leave this database and go to our internal nab medicine database and show everyone. All right, so we have this patient form here, which has some information completed. When I hit accept and I go into my patient's face sheet, now you can see the information that has been completed. So I apologize guys, I'm not sure what was going on in our other database here, but this shows you a demonstration of how the patient forms work. My next section are doctor forms, which function very similarly to patient forms. Unfortunately, I need to flip back to my occupational database here so I can show you guys the ones that apply. So our doctor forms function very similarly to patient forms. Uh, you can utilize these for multiple different uh, reasons. You can create a worksheet for within the clinic that actually pulls multiple different sections of the encounter into a specific screen. So you can document uh, your diagnosis, your HPI or your history subjective. You can pull the vitals into the form. This is just a very simple form uh, that you might want to utilize if you're not billing any NEM code and just have a little bit of information to complete on a patient. You can include orders, your treatment plan, and you can also document some uh, work status and those sorts of things. You can basically incorporate most of the system into one of these worksheets. So if you have lots of different things that you want to complete without having to go from screen to screen, these doctor forms are a really good way to complete those. We also have a lot of doctor forms already available for specific forms. Uh, each state has some workers compensation documentation, first report of injury, um, just lots of different information that we already have those doctor forms available within the system um, for you to be able to take advantage of. So we have the OSHA respiratory questionnaire. So as this information is documented and once it is saved, Anything that was completed in these templates also completes within the record in that section. So in that particular doctor form, I completed the patient's height, weight, blood pressure, pulse, and that information pulled into my vital section. So I have multiple different pieces of information that were documented in that, in that form that now go into the sections of the chart that are applicable to that particular patient. So I added my diagnosis codes as well as my vitals, and now those are both available within these screens. So the next area that we're talking about is DOT certification. We do have a doctor form available for the DOT certification, um, which you can complete the same information there as well as in our templated based documentation. So essentially the patient would complete the section of the health history that is related to the patient. And then the provider would complete all of the information related to the provider's examination, visual, visual acuity, drug screen, so on and so forth. And once you complete that information within the template and hit preview, you're able to print or upload a version of the form that looks just like those big old paper forms. I was in occupational medicine 20 years ago and we had these big paper forms. We also had these little cards that you had to give the patient. And so we're able to 
also also create that from the system and this can be uploaded to the patient's legal documents so the patient can sign it as well so you don't have to keep these big forms in your clinic any longer you can create these directly from the inform information within the system and generate that same information that you used to without having to keep all those cards laying around our next screen is drug screen randomization so this gives you the ability to configure randomization based on your practice's needs so this is something that is set up for you when you start your practice and we have different parameters and different ways that randomization can be configured in the system this is just a list of some of the parameters essentially we can get you a list of patients who need random drug screens or we can actually appoint uh, create appointments for those patients along with giving you a list so it's a good way to give employers the ability to generate random drug screens and not have to have anybody within the employer pull that information or have responsibility for knowing who is going to get a drug screen next. We also have interfaces with multiple different vendors with our EHR. So we can interface with laboratories. We have existing interfaces with quite a few laboratories such as LabCorp, Quest, all of the big national laboratories. We can interface with radiology vendors. Those can be whether they're internal vendors or if you have lab and radiology in your own clinic. We also are working on an interface with the federal DOT database to be able to upload those DOT examinations automatically. We have interfaces with some HR, HRIS payroll systems. So if there's some specific information that needs to be pulled or pushed from your system into one of those systems, that interface can also be set up. And then we can also interface with other EHR systems or software such as a health risk assessment. Um, we can pull those results into the system so that you have everything all contained within your EHR. We also have an integrated telemedicine module. I'm not going to show a full demo of that today, but I did include a link to a short three minute or so video uh, that we've published that kind of shows how that function works. I will show a little screenshot here though of how you're able to document in your record while you have a picture of yourself and the patient over here in the third panel. So it's all contained right there within prognosis. Your patients can access the video meetings via a link with from an email uh, or a text message. They can also log into the patient health record app and access the meeting that way. Here is the link to the video that will be included in our slides at the bottom here. And then just a few additional features to discuss uh, that are particularly helpful for occupational employer health. We have the ability to generate bulk claims for flu shot clinics. We have a return to work module which allows you to track the days off for employees, the work status, when they can return to work, uh, light duty, those types of things. We also have case management for workers' compensation, so you're able to document pre-authorizations for workers' comp services, those kind of count down as you add them to your visits. So if you get five visits approved for physical therapy, you can attach those pre-authorizations to your visits and it gives you a little notification when you're on your last one. You can also store a lot of different information such as insurance adjusters and different contacts with workers' compensation. We also have the ability to file workers' comp claims electronically and send the medical records with them. Our health maintenance reminders, I talked about that a little bit when we were going over the employer protocols, but that gives you the ability to send out reminders via the patient portal when you have, for instance, a group of employees who need to have vaccinations, have a, an annual physical exam, respirator fit test, those are just a few examples. And then we're also working on employee badge-based check-in, so that would coincide probably with the uh, pro check-in module where they're able to scan their badge and arrive for their visit that way. <clears throat> and that concludes our demo for today, and I will turn it over to Dia for questions. All right. Thank you, Monica, for this insightful, wonderful session and for walking all of us through various tasks and tools that can be utilized for employee and occupational health. So we are now open for a question and answer session. Um, as I stated earlier, please type in your question in the question box and send it over to us and we will answer them in order. Uh, if uh, we are unable to answer it during the course of this webinar, we will reach out to you. You have Monica's email ID, walker at bismaticsinc.com. You can also send your questions and uh, any suggestions or feedback to Monica. 
uh, hi, Monica. We do have a few questions, so let me go with them one by one. So okay. the very first question is, is there a limit to how many protocol can be listed under an employer? I don't believe there is. I think that you can just continue to hit the plus button and add as many as you need to. Okay. Uh, the next question is, can the medical review be sent to multiple people? Right now, we have it configured only be able to be sent to one, either via email or, um, let me go to that screen here, via fax or via email just to one party. I believe that is one of our first few screens. Where is my review here. I'm skipping all around it. Here we go. So you can only include one name here um, and you can determine whether that's fax or email. However, you can give additional people access to that, mostly that same information by giving them access to the employer portal. So as long as you share those progress notes or those results to the employer portal, additional people could have access by logging in that way. Okay. Um, here is a different question, actually not related to OCMED, but it's in one ways. So uh, uh, somebody wants to inquire, where is the coronavirus questionnaire located in our sure. HR? Yeah, absolutely. I will be happy to locate that for you. I don't have it in this database. Let me log into our internal medicine database here. So we have it right here in our patient form section. So they can complete this information. Once you have this uploaded into your database, if you don't have this in your database, then you can put in a support ticket and they can get that added for you. Uh, so it would be here in your patient forms. And then once this is accepted, it also appears in your specialty section as a template that can be uh, viewed. Actually, I did that on a patient that wasn't arrived yet. Let me put that on somebody who is arrived. So once this information is completed, then it also generates that specialty uh, information right here within your procedures or depending on which type of database and specialty you are, it would be in your specialty section. Okay, all right. Uh, moving on to the next question. The OT exams, the small cards that the drivers like for their wallets up from the template or is it the standard sheet size version that they will have to fold up hmm that is a really good question if we don't have the format to be able to print that as it is i think we could adjust the printer settings so that it just prints on a on a small section that you could kind of print the front and back if there's a back to it and fold it over so I will look into that, and um, if Dia, you'll make sure that I have the contact name of the person who asked that sure. question, I'll look into that and, and see what we can do for that, no problem. Sure, okay. I will provide you with all the details, and then we can reach out and send the information. Okay. All right, so moving on to the next question. Um, can you view the individual invoices and print them from the employer screen account button? You can let me flip back to my occupational database here. So within the uh, same uh, settings and configuration in our employer vendor section here, I know my Aero Industries have some information here. When you click this account screen, you'll see a list and these little blue hyperlinks give you the ability to actually click on those invoices and print them um, right from that screen. So depending on even this one's got several different formats that are being sent to different TPAs, but you can click directly into the invoices there and print them instead of having to go to the billing side and print reports or print your invoices over there. So it's a very easy way to, to get that information quickly. All right. Uh, so the next question um, is, if the employer's fax number is saved in the employer screen, Will the fax number pull out the letters out screen to send a fax? 
Yes, it will. So as I go into my patient, I know that she is an, em an employee of the Aero Industries when I go into my letters out screen and I choose the employer here, hit go, it automatically fills in my fax number, address, everything for my letters out screen. So then I'm able to um, you know, pull up the information specific to that patient that I wanna send them with our letters out function and it pulls that information right into the record there. And then I'm able to save it and fax it directly from this screen. All right. Uh, that was all the questions that we had for today. And I would want to tell everybody that in case you want to reach out, you can reach out to Monica at her email. And Monica, if you can add that slide up for everybody, please. Yes. So, uh, there. All right, thank you. So thank you once again, Monica, for all the information and for your expertise and walking us through the details. I would also like to thank all our attendees for taking out time and being here with us today. Uh, you can also access the details of the webinar in various ways. We will have it available in our resource center. We will also send all the details in a follow-up email, and you can also reach out to Monica. So thank you, all of us, and hear from everybody at Prognosis. We wish you a safe week ahead. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.